hey, hey, what is going on here? What do you get when you have a hybrid mixture of a character with the personality of Spider-Man and also having the gameplay mechanics of a cross between the Prince of Persia and Shinobi? That's right, you get the most underappreciated overlooked title in my opinion on the GameCube. Developed by Argonaut Games and published by Namco in 2003, this is iNinja. iNinja was also released on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, but for this review we're going to focus on the GameCube version which I feel is also the best version. Right off the bat, you can immediately tell that iNinja has some of the best graphics and sound on the GameCube. However, one of the flaws with the sound is the repetitive voice. Almost identical, it reminds me of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, released also for the game. Feel my steel! Feel my steel! Feel my steel! Eat the, eat the, eat the, eat the, eat the, eat the, eat the. Probably the most well known thing about iNinja's legacy is that Billy West, who voiced Ren and Stimpy, and Philip J. Fry from Futurama and other characters, was the voice of the main protagonist in iNinja. Although he's pretty good in the role, it gets quite tiresome, especially like I said with the Ninja Turtle routine. The plot of iNinja isn't too bad. It's nothing too special either. It's kind of a generic substance to it. The master is killed by an evil force, and you, the ninja, must set out to avenge his death. Pretty much like every ninja title or movie. Now why a lot of people remember this game is definitely not for the story. iNinja has an insane amount of moves that your ninja can do just while on the ground. Also like running up walls a la Prince of Persia and ninja jumping, plus the addition of a grappling hook which has a Zelda feel to it. Also half pipe tracks for your ninja to go up on and the giant spear mode you acquire which will make you feel like you're in Super Monkey Ball are among the parts of the game that make it seem fresh, but never too rough. Deceptive cutesy graphics don't mean this is a kid's game. It gets very difficult in the later stages, trust me. Especially with the addition of these giant robots while trying to fight all kinds of groups of standard enemies. Checkpoints are in the game and very much come in handy and keep you from wanting to throw your controller down and call it a day on iNinja. In the premise of each stage, you have to unlock doors to complete the stage. Different colors you need for different types of bells to unlock certain doors, like a yellow bell for a yellow barrier on a door. Different objectives to get the bells like sprint races and defeating all the required enemies on that section to progress are other ways to get bells. When I mention I Ninja keeping it fresh, there are also other gameplay style variations, like a third person action title doesn't usually have, like running around on ramps like Super Monkey Ball as mentioned, first person perspectives, and on the ball section, it feels a lot like the Metroid Prime series, especially played on this version, on the GameCube. My biggest gripe about this game is that it makes you repeat levels you've previously beaten, and it doesn't just make you repeat them, it makes you repeat them in a time trial mode. Usually I wouldn't mind this, but in this game, when it gets this difficult later on, it seems like it was just done to make the game b seem bigger than it actually is. With that aside though, this game has too many positives going for it for you to not give it a chance. For those of you that remember this game, everyone that does remembers it very fondly. I've never met anyone that didn't like this game, yet I've never met a lot of people that even know this game. So that's I Ninja, the epitome of an overlooked gem for the Nintendo GameCube. This is Habiki Quickie, check it out next.